So, how is it possible that the moon, during a lunar eclipse, when it is going down, will actually uh, show the shadow of the Earth on top of it, uh, moving or crawling downwards, uh, an increasing shadow? Now, of course, right now is uh, the, the beginning of the lunar eclipse. The, the full eclipsed phase will be when the moon is about hitting the horizon. Um, and right now it's not totally in the shadow of the Earth. But it, it feels counterintuitive. It, the moon is going down, but the shadow is also going down. How is that even possible in the heliocentric model? Now what we need to know uh, is how do every star and, and the sun and the moon and the shadow of the Earth, how is it moving in the sky and why? Now this is Polaris and you can see it when you live in the northern hemisphere and every star is going to rotate around it counterclockwise. Let's have a little demonstration. As you can see it moves counterclockwise at a speed, an angular speed of 361 degrees every 24 hours. And this extra one degree will cause the, the, the different constellations seen every different month and um, some constellations you only see in the summer while others you see in the winter etc. The Sun of course is doing a full circle in 24 hours, so 360 degrees uh, every day but the Moon is actually going slower. As you can see here the Moon of course will also rotate counterclockwise when you increase time but is slightly slower than the other stars and the Sun. Let's fixate for example on this star here and when you increase time you can see that the Moon is going in the other direction. So what I did here when you install an equatorial mount which counters the rotation of the Earth, so it is 15 degrees per hour, you can see that the Moon is in fact going in the other direction from west to east while everything is going from east to west. So if we just check how quick, how, how, how fast the moon is going, instead of 15 degrees per hour, only 14 and a half degrees. Right now there is somewhere here, here somewhere, a shadow of the Earth. Of course it's caused by the sun, and the sun right now is below the horizon, it's over here. We can check how low below the horizon it is. We can use the heliocentric model, of course, because the flat earth model doesn't predict anything. So we, we need to use the one that does predict something. Right now, it's predicted that the sun is minus 20 degrees below the horizon. So measured from the sun to the horizon is 20 degrees, 20 and a half actually. And the azimuth, so that is the direction um, compared to northeast southwest, is 104 degrees right now. If we increase or decrease time, you will see these numbers change. The shadow of the Earth is, of course, cast in the other direction, away from the Sun. So that will be at uh, 284 degrees and plus 20 and a half degrees. So maybe we can find a spot that has this. 284 degrees azimuth and plus 20 degrees in elevation or in altitude. And I've done some digging and I find that one of these stars over here is pretty good. As you can see, 20 degrees up and indeed 284 degrees in azimuth. So somewhere over here, there is the shadow of the Earth. And the moon is pretty close, but it's still below this shadow. And what will happen if we focus on this star, so we actually uh, exclude the 15 degrees per hour uh, west, uh, sorry, east to west, you will see that the moon is going from west to east, and every minute it will creep a bit. And when we increase the time, you will see that indeed the top of the moon is in shadow. And this is happening slightly above the horizon. It's pretty dark, but you see the horizon over here. And when we increase time more and more and more, oh, focus on the start. When we increase the time, we see that the moon is going 100% in the shadow of the Earth. And this is happening at the same moment that on the other side, 
if this is going wrong, come on. The sun is indeed half above the horizon. This is the moment that we can call it a selenelion. It's not fully above the horizon, it's not fully below the horizon either over here. It's somewhere in the middle. But if we um, allow the atmosphere to, to be visible, you see that there is a lot of twilight. The sun is over here, everything is lit, so it feels already as if the, um, the sun is well be above the horizon, but in fact it isn't. Um, where is the moon? Let's kill the, uh, the Earth too. Yeah, it's eclipsed of course. Whoops, I lost the moon should be... oh, it's over there. So this is the moment that we can call it a selenelion, but the hour in advance, we just call it a normal first phase of the lunar eclipse. And part of the shadow, a uh, part of the moon is in the shadow, the top is in the shadow, of course, as predicted, and everything is just normal. So I'm happy with the model that I like to use, the heliocentric model. I'm not happy about the, the flat earth model, which doesn't predict anything at all so far. We'll see how this uh, evolves in the future. But right now, this is the explanation for why the shadow is on the top of the moon and not the bottom. Thank you very much.